Okay, this next hand you're about to see is pretty fascinating, not because of the cards that are dealt or actually the, the flop that hits, but more so uh, because of what's uh, going through the minds of both um, Alvin and uh, Kirk in this hand. Uh, they're almost having a conversation with each other um, mentally. And it's really kind of interesting. Let's just take a look here and rip it apart. Al's got king queen here. Lines are one and two. He's going to come in for eight bucks. I think Kirk might possibly be floating me here. Okay, stop it right there for just a second. You see, he's suspicious now that Kirk is floating him. What he means by that is just trying to call in position so that he can outplay him after the flop. And Al's absolutely right, because that's what Kirk's doing here. He's got 6-8 offsuit, which is kind of a real a weak hand. And the only reason he's really playing it is because he thinks that maybe he can outplay Alvin. Let's go ahead and roll it. Seeing that I raised last hand with King Jack and missed a bet, I think he believes that he can outplay me at this point. And we're going to find out. He beat the crap out of me at the WPT, so he might be remembering that as well. I think we played 10 pots together at the WPT, and he had position on me in every one, and I think I won one of them. I called that not a very strong hand, but the thing is I have two amateurs behind me. So, in theory, in my mind, I think I have the button because I can read these other two on my left so well. And I tried to pick off Alvin here. Uh, plus, I think I have a read on Alvin. So, uh, oh, excellent. Okay, stop happens. it right there. As you can see, both players have a, a good read into what each other's thinking. But Alvin seemed almost uh, negative in what he had to say. He was thinking, oh my goodness, Kirk just beats me up every time. And I only won one out of ten pots. And as a, as a, as a trainer, as a sort of a mental state, very, very negative. When you're playing against an opponent, you don't want to be thinking about the fact that he owns you or that he pones you for you online players out there. <laughs> Generally speaking, you want to think more positively and not always feel as though um, you're, you know, you're on the... But right off the bat, it's as though Kirk has the psychological uh, game won. And uh, as you heard from Kirk, what, which I thought was really interesting, what he said is that he feels as though he almost had the button because the two players behind him were relatively you know, uh, novice players and uh, he read them so well. So he felt comfortable uh, not being out of position uh, against one of the players behind him. So essentially he feels as though he has the button, and he's just trying to pick off Alvin, uh, just trying to outplay him after the flop with a hand that, again, 6-8 offsuit is kind of a junk hand, and he's not playing it based on the merits of, uh, of, of the cards, more so just hoping that uh, Alvin misses. Of course, we had a hitchhiker here, Rodney, who also calls. So we're going to have three players seeing this flop. Flop is Jack of Diamonds, Ace of Diamonds, Ten of Hearts. Actions on Rodney to check. All right. I flopped the net, so I'm going to check it. And I got a faded diamond here. Twelve dollars. Okay. I bet there's. They all check to me. I can find out cheaply enough. I bet just only just over half the pot. I'm going to find out where the heck I'm at. The question is, should I try and fade a diamond with a board pairing? I'm going to try and prop it up here and see if I can get something out of them. If I make a bigger bet, I don't want to make a standard bet, but I'm going to throw up to forty. <laughs> Good God, <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that one I heard. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. What I was saying before was I think I found out the information I wanted to, and Alvin's not giving me that that I read that I have on him. So. It's very well uh, to lay this down. All right. Yeah. Nice hand, man. As Kirk mentioned, uh, his bet was small enough, only $12. Uh, even though he got caught in, in that he was bluffing, Alvin actually had the nuts. But continually, if they continue to play pots like this where Alvin has the king-queen and feels deject against Kirk in position with 6-8, uh, Kirk's going to do really well. Sometimes he's going to flop the best hand and maybe win a big pot. Other times he's going to be able to outplay and, and bluff Alvin. As Alvin mentioned uh, in previous tournaments, he'd only won one out of ten hands. And I, I can promise you this, uh, Kirk didn't have the best hand nine out of ten times. But position is power. In this situation, Kirk played it pretty well. Again, he lost the uh, the pot, but it was very minimal. Eight bucks before the flop, 12 on the flop with one stab to try to figure out if maybe he could continue with the bluff. Alvin, of course, flopped the nuts, and it's tough to bluff a guy who flopped the joint. <laughs>